Good afternoon. Um, I am going to endeavor to keep this uh, fairly short. I'm hoping that we can be done in uh, under 30 minutes. Uh, I want to make sure we take time for questions. Um, I know some of the testers that we have with us this time are new, uh, and so I don't want to zip through too fast. Um, so I'm going to make sure that we, we have time for questions, but I do want to get us be respectful of folks' time and get us out um, as soon as we can. Uh, so um, just just to so everybody knows, we we did start a recording of this um, oh, for, yeah. for some who may not be able to attend. Or for those of you that would like to revisit it over and over <laughs> and over again. Um, so uh, welcome to testing. We are uh, we are just about to start. Um, Oh, I need to, I'm going to move pictures because it's right in the middle of my screen. Um, so just to let you know uh, what we're going to be doing today, we're going to talk um, uh, briefly about uh, within the CIS office, um, who's responsible for what area. So if you find an issue, you'll know who to talk to, um, what, what the testing process is, uh, our timeline, uh, we want to make sure that you've got access to both SharePoint and to test so that uh, you can do your testing and then log the, uh, the information. Uh, everybody's favorite spreadsheets, um, perceptive content testing, uh, a note about query migrations, uh, and then a couple of minutes for questions if we have any. Um, uh, so and I will show you this in a few moments, but this presentation uh, is uh, has been uploaded to the SharePoint site. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that we put uh, folks' names and email addresses. Uh, so if you run into some testing issues with, uh, with student records, you'll know that Krista Bonifer uh, is the person to talk to. If you have an issue with financial aid, uh, Andrew Brockway, um, I think, most of the folks on here, if not everybody on here, is familiar with the module leads or has periodic meetings, uh, but I just wanted to have that out and documented. Uh, so testing processes, what are we doing here? Um, so most of you have been through this before, but um, for those of you that haven't, um, each year, we upgrade uh, or we update people tools uh, at some point in the summer. Uh, and so that is uh, that is what we are doing now. Um, we are also going to be testing um, the most most current PUM, which are, which are a bundle of updates and fixes that come from PeopleSoft for Campus Solutions. We are on PUM 25 or we will be testing PUM 25. Uh, so um, we're going to be testing both that POM and people tools. Uh, and at the same time, we are going to be uh, loading in a bundle of fixes from High Point Technology, uh, which is the vendor who, um, uh, who has created kind of the, the look, the, the CX um, look uh, that Duke Hub has for students. So we're going to be uh, testing three separate uh, types of updates that are made to the Duke Hub uh, environment. Um, and we are going to be testing a whole set of things. So with normal PUM testing, we, we basically stick with pages and processes. Um, since we're doing PUM uh, and people tools, we are going to try to be as thorough as possible. Um, move the pictures over here because I can't read what I need to read. Um, so we're going to be testing pages, uh, navigating to pages, make sure that all of the pages that you use on a daily basis or weekly or monthly are available um, and they act in the way that you expect them to. Um, we're going to be testing our processes. Um, so if you run something or run a process via process scheduler uh, or if you run a job or a job set, uh, we're going to be testing those. Um, and we're going to be paying attention to uh, appearances um, and the way that you navigate through the system, um, way the push buttons work, if you push them, um, if you're in query, you know, that you're getting appropriate query responses, um, just trying to test everything 
uh, as thoroughly as possible. Um, and if something breaks, then we're asking uh, that you uh, will log this in the spreadsheets that we're going to look at in a couple of minutes um, and uh, let us know in the SIS office that you found uh, that you found a problem, uh, which is you know a potentially a bug or an issue. Um, sometimes things are configuration issues, uh, but just let us know and we will try to get get on that. Um, timeline. So we are going to be starting on Tuesday, June twenty first. Um, so we are going to start next week. Um, as you'll see in a couple of minutes, test is actually up right now uh, and will be intermittently available um, today, tomorrow. Um, but uh, OIT or kind of our OIT partners are going to be working in it today, tomorrow, um, potentially over the weekend. Uh, we are asking uh, testers to not start testing until, uh, until Tuesday, um, June 21st. Um, so testing will run from June 21st, which is a Tuesday, through July 17th, which is a Friday. Um, if you've been through this before, you know that we, we're asking that you test uh, early. Um, so if you, if you can jump in on Tuesday, that would be fantastic. Um, but uh, we're just wanting to get uh, as much testing done up front as possible. Uh, that way it gives uh, gives our developers a chance to address things um, uh, in enough time uh, to work on them. Uh, we we expect to find issues with people tools updates. Uh, there are often issues, and they sometimes crop up in, in unusual places. Um, you know, there there could be issues with file parser load or with the way uh, query manager uses expressions. Um, so we expect that there will be things that we'll need to take a look at. So the sooner that you can jump into that, uh, the better it will be for all of us. Um, once you find an issue, uh, we'll want you to update um, the spreadsheet. We're going to look at those again. Uh, we want you to update the spreadsheet to let us, um, to let us know. Um, that that there is a problem. Uh, if you would also, in some way, notify the module lead. Uh, so if if you find something having to do with financial aid, uh, either send Andrew an email or uh, text him via Teams or or however. But just reach out and let him know, or whoever the appropriate module lead is, let them know uh, so that they'll be aware. Uh, and then we are going to end testing on July 17th, which is a Friday. Um, and at that point, we're going to turn tests back over to OIT. Uh, there are a set of things that they need to do to get prepared for us to move um, all of these fixes over into uh, prod on July 23rd. Tom, just a quick note. Friday yeah. is, is the 15th. Teams, I believe. Oh, did I put No, wait. Tomorrow? Yeah, Friday is the 15th. Okay. We, we can make the corrections later, but just so that that sticks and and okay. makes sense. Thank you. That made it all the way through all the screens and checks and stuff. Um, yeah, so yep, Friday. I missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's fine. I looked at this probably two or three times. Um, so the 15th. Uh, but that doesn't matter because you're all going to be testing early anyway. So. Um, One of the things that I would like to ask that if, if you're a tester, if you're testing with us, um, that you do today or at least tomorrow is to um, go in and make sure that you have access to the SharePoint page where the, the spreadsheets are located. Um, if you are new to this or if you haven't done any testing before, uh, it's possible that you don't have access to the SharePoint site. Um, if you can just reach out to me, send me an email. Uh, I'll make sure that you get added in. Um, share, the SharePoint security has been interesting uh, over the last year. We used to be able to add folks to grouper groups, and it worked pretty smoothly. Uh, it is it works less smoothly now. Um, so, uh, but if you're having any difficulty, just reach out uh, to me or Delia, um, and we can make sure that you have access. Uh, the other thing to do is make sure that you have access to the test environment. Um, 
I expect everybody here has access, um, but it's possible, you know, that it could be an issue. Um, better to find out uh, today or tomorrow uh, than wait until sometime next week. Um, so if you could just log in to both of those sites today or tomorrow, um, that would be fantastic. Uh, and keep in mind, uh, test is, is only intermittently available. I think it'll, it'll be available all day today. Um, and then it may be down a little bit tomorrow as OIT is putting finishing touches on it. Ah, the spreadsheets. Um, so if you've done testing before, you know uh, how much fun the spreadsheets are. Um, and since we are doing uh, some kind of extended testing, uh, since this is a people tools update, as well as the POM and the high point updates, um, we have a couple of different spreadsheets in play. Uh, so there is a PeopleSoft testing spreadsheet. Um, and if, when we go out and look on the, on the SharePoint site, we'll see uh, its name is PeopleTools 8.59 PUM25 testing. Uh, so within that spreadsheet, that is all of the PeopleSoft testing, um, all of those rows and rows and rows of testing that we typically do. Um, when you go in and look, you're going to see that um, there are uh, a lot of different tabs. Uh, there's basically one for each module, financial aid, student records, admissions, um, at least one. Uh, and then in many cases, there will be as many as three um, for each module. So we have what we call regular testing. Those are just regular processes that um, that uh, are kind of step by step, all the different processes that all of our different offices uh, run through every time we do this testing. Uh, there is also something called a page inventory. Uh, with people tools updates in the past, we have lost access to some of our pages, or we found that pages don't work um, as they're supposed to work. So we basically created an inventory of pages that everybody in the registrar's office goes to, or everybody in financial aid goes to. Um, and we are asking that folks just navigate to the page, click the page, open the page, um, and uh, push buttons, do whatever, navigate through the page, just to make sure it is operating like you expect. Um, for um, in addition to those two types of uh, or those two tabs, there's also going to be a tab for watts. Um, so we are making sure that um, for uh, for all of those all of that registrar testing that we do, all of that bursar testing that we do, we're going to do it for both Duke and for watts because we found that sometimes those two systems work a little bit differently based on configuration. Um, so we'll be testing for watts as well. Um, and then finally, at the very end of this very long spreadsheet, there is a changes and updates tab um, that has all of the changes that Oracle has pushed our way um, with people tools um, and with, uh, with the POM. Uh, when I open them up in a couple of minutes, you'll see uh, there are specific people assigned to each of these tasks. So we won't be asking you to do all of them or just go in and do them randomly. People are assigned to each of these tasks. So um, you'll be going in and looking for your name uh, and then doing the things that are assigned to you. Um, all of this is based on testing we've done in the past. So uh, I think for almost everybody involved, it, this will all look very familiar. There's not really been any changes to it. Um, but for those of you that are new, uh, you may wanna take just a little bit of time to look through this. Um, the second uh, spreadsheet that we're going to be working through is this, the High Point technology uh, testing spreadsheet. So um, High Point uh, is the vendor that created CX, which is, which is what gives Duke Hub its particular look. Um, they do quarterly updates, uh, and so those have gone in. Uh, we'll be testing for those as well. Um, the spreadsheet is called HPT um, 050822. I really should come up with a different name for that. Um, but anyway, that's the, the Q2 updates. Um, it is just like, um, it looks very similar to, to the PeopleSoft testing spreadsheet. 
Uh, there are sets of tasks. Some of them, um, uh, all of them will have people assigned that will be doing the testing. Um, we'll take a brief look at that as well. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, mostly the SIS office does high point testing. Uh, there are some selected users within the registrar's office within financial aid uh, and perhaps the bursar that do a little bit of the high point testing with us. Um, the final thing, uh, the final spreadsheet that is out there is a tools and integration testing. Um, this is a spreadsheet that helps us track integration testing uh, where we are testing large processes over um, uh, across PeopleSoft. Um, this is really only for the SIS office and for OIT. Uh, so we'll be the ones that are handling that. Um, if you're not in the SIS office or on the OIT uh, side of the house, you don't have to worry about, uh, about that particular spreadsheet. All right, I'm going to, I'll stop for just a second. Are there, we're definitely going to go look at these, um, but are there questions <laughs> before I move on? Okay. When we go look at the spreadsheet, or when we go to the SharePoint site, this is a screenshot of it. Um, you can see that there's the integration testing, the high point testing spreadsheet, and people tools. Um, one thing that I have added um, on the site is this presentation. Um, so there's a PowerPoint. So if you go out and you, you, you need somebody's email address or you just wanted to review this because it's been frankly, just fantastic. Um, you can you can get to it through this end user testing. Kathy Carly, you're the only person I can see and you're the only way I can judge if jokes are, are landing or not. We'll, we'll strike that one. All right, here we go. Um, so for perceptive content, we will be doing perceptive content testing. Um, most of that uh, is done through uh, perceptive experience. Um, however, uh, if you use a perceptive content client, um, if you have that uh, and something that you use, um, and if you be doing any testing for that with a client, you will need to update your software. Um, this has been the most current version of, of the client has been available, I think, for about two months. Um, it's been, I think it's been about two months. Um, so it is likely that folks have already updated um, the client, but if you have not, uh, this is the link to do that. Uh, you just go to the software site on um, uh, the software download for OIT, log in using your net ID, and then down, download the perceptive content client, uh, and it will install just like any other software would. Uh, our, prim our primary tip for testing, just like our primary tip for life, is clear your cache. Um, the, uh, one of the things that we recommend you do for testing, uh, aside from clearing your cache, uh, is to plan on using a different browser for testing. Um, if you, it is, it, since um, PeopleSoft, since Duke Hub is going to be on different tools versions, um, you won't be able to kind of flip easily from one, one site to the other. Um, so it makes sense um, to go ahead and kind of designate one of your, when you're doing your testing, to go ahead and designate you know, Chrome or Firefox or Safari. Um, strike that, I didn't say Safari. Um, or Opera, uh, you know, use one of those to test. Um, and before you start testing, go ahead and clear your cache, you know, set everything back to a baseline, um, and then use a single browser uh, to do all of your testing in. Um, and uh, you will not, you will get some kind of weird errors if you're jumping from prod and, and you go back and you try to test, log out and just try to test. Um, you'll definitely need to clear your cache as you're moving from one instance to another. Um, so the other thing that we're gonna look at at the end uh, are some changes to navigation within PeopleSoft. Um, they are, uh, 
there are a couple of things that you'll see, you'll notice immediately. Uh, and the first one is that search is now placed in the center uh, of, of, a, of the home page. It's kind of the upper top part. Um, in previous versions, in our current version rather, uh, in Prod, uh, you have to kind of activate search by clicking the little search icon in the upper right corner. Um, in the updated version, uh, it is front and center um, and it's always present. Um, uh, also, in, um, uh, in our current version, the way that you select your home page uh, is uh, uh, in the middle, and that's been shifted to the left. And then uh, the recently visited and your favorites kind of options are located on the left now. And so I'm just going to jump real quick to show because a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, so you can see in the top, um, Sys homepage, that's my homepage. I make my changes to my homepage there. Um, my navigator icon is uh, off on the upper right and I can get to my favorites and things through that. Um, with the newer version, um, and this is a picture from our dev environment, um, you can see that search is right there in the middle uh, and it is always, it's always on. Um, so it will always be there. Um, there is also on your uh, left-hand side, there is a uh, recently visited icon, which is the little clock. And then there is a favorites, which is a little heart. Um, so that's a little bit different. Um, they've kind of moved things around a little bit. Uh, also, the way, that you, um, uh, the way that you access the different home pages is, uh, has been changed and you can see uh, on the upper left side uh, where it says sys homepage, that's how, that is now where we change uh, from one homepage to the next. Um, so it's, all of the things are still available from the homepage. They're just shifted around slightly. Um, uh, there has also been a change to, to the breadcrumbs. Um, so whereas the menu you used to access uh, from the upper left, from the upper right side, um, you still get to it from the upper right side, um, but the, um, the menu has shifted uh, to the nav bar, um, which is, it's a smallish change. Uh, you, you will definitely notice it, but it takes almost no time to transition to where where it's presented. The thing that is a little bit different that, that was I noticed immediately was the default value for the menu has changed to an alphabetical order. So whereas for those of us that have been in PeopleSoft for a long time, we're very used to the order in which the menu is presented with Duke components at the top and you kind of proceed down. Um, it is now presented in an alphabetical order. Um, uh, which was different. Um, in talking with folks in the CIS office, I think it, we were kind of evenly split between who liked that better. Um, so I think this is going to, a lot of the way people see this is going to revolve, or, um, devolve down to kind of personal choice. What do you like better? What are you used to? Um, fortunately, uh, it is a choice. So users can choose between alphabetical or uh, what Oracle calls their standard views. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. Um, recently visited and favorites are still on the nav bar, so you can get to them as well as those little icons on the left. Um, uh, this is an example of uh, what the um, menu looks like now um, in, in an alphabetical order. Uh, so starts with academic advisement, works its way down. Um, if you want to change uh, the order in which uh, the menu appears, you do that by clicking. Once you click on um, the navigator icon, uh, you can click on the little gear icon that's highlighted here, and you have the option of choosing between alphabetical or standard. Um, and when I walk through this kind of in a live 
uh, fire exercise in just a second. I'll show you uh, how to do that. Um, and again, it's, it is, I think it's going to really be just personal preference. Some people uh, have, have, I think, prefer it being in an alphabetical order. It's easy to find. People tools is at the bottom. Financial aid is higher. Um, I, I think if you've been in there for a long time, you're kind of, you may be kind of used to the way that things are currently. It's, uh, it's going to be personal choice. All right, live fire exercise. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing for just a second. I'm going to pull the browser up. Oh, my session has expired. Give me a second to log in. Uh, and while we're taking a uh, while we're I'm logging in, are there questions? Any, does anyone have questions or comments? Good. All right. Okay. Move this around just a little bit. Um, okay. So this is the test environment. This is where everybody's going to be doing testing. Um, and you can see that most of our customizations uh, in terms of the tiles that we have, in terms of the background, uh, that displays, uh, those are still all there. Uh, and so in that sense, it looks very, very similar to what we have right now. Um, uh, the differences that I highlighted, I'm going to kind of walk through right now. Um, so uh, the first difference is search is right here. Search gives you the ability to, to select menu or um, kind of all content. Uh, in my short testing of this, it doesn't change the information that gets pulled back when you look for something. Selecting either one of these makes the appearance, kind of the way the information gets presented changes a little bit. But um, I would just recommend sticking with menu. Uh, and I'm just going to type in packaging status, which is a financial aid page. Um, and uh, search works basically the same way. It's just presented slightly different. Uh, so it has taken me to the packaging status page. And I'm not going to worry about logging in. So I'm going to click on the home icon. Um, it's taking me back here. Um, Selecting home pages is now done from the upper left corner. Um, so these are several of the home pages that I have um, and that I use. Uh, I can flip through them here. Um, I don't think Morgan is on this call, but it seems like the ability to order these works better in this version of tools. Okay. Uh, I, I think the way that this, you know, how we always have problems ordering things, it seems to work better. The homepage ordering seems to work better in 859. Well, maybe they fixed it. Then. Maybe they did. Um, the, I don't know, I don't know what the word for this little white area is over here yet. Uh, I was looking for uh, in documentation what Oracle calls this section. Um, I don't have that word yet, but over here on the left, you can see recent pages. So these are pages that I visited um, lately. Um, and these are my favorites. And um, they're accessible from the left side uh, now. Uh, functionality, they work exactly the same as they do in prod. So you, know, you can tag a page as a favorite, you can edit them, you can come in here and change the sequence number if you want to. Um, and for those of you who have not played with this, I, I don't, I have not put a sequence number uh, next to my favorites. And so what that does, is it kind of automatically presents them in a um, alphabetical order. But you could sequence them in a different order if you wanted to. 
but that's the same as prod is right now. Um, okay, so I clicked on my little navigator icon here. Uh, and you can see that uh, my, I have a lot of menu items, um, but mine are presented in the same order that they used to be presented in, or that you, I would see them in prod at the moment. Um, it's part of a G. So, um, it, however, if I wanted to put them into an, uh, an alphabetical order, I would click on my little gear icon. I would select alphabetical. Now we click save. And that will slowly reorder them. So now they're in alphabetical order. Um, and you can kind of scroll down to look, to find what you're looking for. Um, I will point out, if you apply that alphabetical order, it applies all the way down. Um, so if I go one menu group in, everything is presented in an alphabetical order. If I go another menu group in, it's in alphabetical order. Um, let's see, let's find, let's look at. So Tom, this is Christy, I have a um, question. Yes, ma'am. Um, for, like in the past with the menus, um, I would like to put it in process order. So I would number it um, sort of like an outline with the label. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's no longer available, or it might adjust if you put the numbers. Were you doing that with your favorites, or? Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Okay. So um, I'm going to visit. So as I mentioned earlier, recently visited and favorites are still here. I'm going to go back on edit favorites. So I could, if I wanted to, I could change. I could. Um, Let's make equation editor, uh, we'll make that 10, and equation names 11, uh, 12. And so that's placed them down here. And if I wanna change, if I wanna change first, second, third, save, um, and if I look at my favorites now, they're down here. Perfect. That's what I was asking. Thank you. Okay. So I, I wasn't sure I was answering your question because I, I think one of the things that um, uh, uh, we've had a couple of different discussions within the SIS office about um, changes in navigations, um, and that that might discombobulate some folks. It might, like I said, I think some people will actually prefer it. Um, um, however, this is a good time just to remind folks, we can create customized tiles. Um, we can create navigation collections if you need something. Um, if you have a set of processes that you want to be in a, presented in a specific order, um, all of these tiles uh, that are on here either link to a specific page, uh, or in some cases, they link to, um, I don't have one with me right now, or they link to a set of pages. So um, as you are thinking about navigation and navigating through the system, just keep in mind that uh, we do have the ability to present kind of some customized um, processes or process flows for you. Um, and that's, that's nothing that requires development. That's something that the SIS office can do uh, and turn around for you guys pretty quickly. Um, um, okay, so we've done Thank favorites you. recently. We've done favorites and recently visited. Um, I've shown you how to reorder this. Um, we have looked, I think all of the, I thought initially that there might have been, there might be a problem with the, the tiles that present messages, um, but those seem to be working fine. Um, while I am outside of the, the PowerPoint, is there anything uh, that anybody would like to take a look at within PeopleSoft? 
Okay. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. And we're basically done. Uh, I did want to, I did uh, one other thing that I wanted to uh, let folks know. Um, uh, we will be uh, test is now uh, on a different uh, people tools level. Uh, and so we will not be able to migrate things like query or file parser definitions or things like that from one instance to another. Um, so if, if you are working on a particularly complex query, uh, we would suggest you do that in UAT, um, and that can be migrated over, can be migrated up to prod. Um, so if, if, and a lot of folks, a lot of folks do that, they'll kind of tweak uh, queries and tests and then request them to be migrated. Uh, that's still fine, but just do that work in UAT um, uh, up until we get uh, prod updated. And then we'll go back to the, kind of the old way of doing it. Hey, Tom, can, yes, you, can you go back to test and walk? I, I know you showed us how to change it to standard, but did you walk through it in live tests? Um, I did, but I will go back and do it again. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Stop share. Um, I see I've already exceeded my time limit. Okay. So Um, my menu, uh, which is, I mean, you get to it through this nav bar, which is slightly different, but I think it took me about two seconds to get used to. Um, if you click on this little, you have the ability to choose between alphabetical and standard. So I'm going to switch that to standard and click save. And then I'm going to watch while that thing goes like this. Okay, so now my menu is back to kind of that standard order, um, which starts at Duke Components and kind of goes down. Um, if you are not in the Sys office, it's likely that you don't see a lot of this. Um, uh, that you you see kind of a smaller set of of menu items, but you know from here everything is basically exactly the same. Um, as you get down in here, it's not alphabetized. It's just exactly the same. Um, I'm gonna click back there. Oh, there is one other thing. So that little gearbox is underneath the navigator. That's how I do that. Uh, there. There is the ability to personalize your home pages. So this is this is kind of standard fluid stuff. This has not really changed uh, between uh, the the current version that we're on and the new version that is coming. Um, but I did want to um, point out that it it appears um, if you have used this to move around your home pages, uh, you know that it's kind of a, a drag and drop and that sometimes it works well and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I was telling Morgan that this seems like it's working a little bit better. So if you want to try to reorder your home pages, this is where you do that on the notifications um, setup. There is also this thing called a notifications panel, which was turned on by default. And I found hugely annoying. So I'm going to turn it on just to show you what it is. Um, I'm going to click on save. And then I'm going to point out um, kind of two things. First, you'll remember that I made academics and records my top home page. And it is, it is now the top home page. Um, 
So when I come back in, academics and records will be what displays here. The other thing um, that I found uh, yesterday when I was testing this uh, was that notifications are turned on. Um, and we do not use notifications here. Maybe one day we will. Um, but right now we do not use this thing called notifications. And there's not, you can't click on it. It doesn't do anything. You, um, you can mess with these settings and stuff, but we don't use it. So there's no reason to do that. Uh, to get rid of it, click on the little kebab, click on personalized homepage. And when it comes up, click that to know. And then save. And you can curse and swear at the machine as much as you want. It's fine. Um, Tom, can you roll that out turned off or it can't be? Um, I, I, we're going to uh, talk with OIT to see. There are under the personalization um, settings. I think we can turn that off. Um, I ju we just haven't had a chance to play with it. Um, it seems to take up valuable real, real estate. And I'm not sure anyone's really going to think to go to the kebab. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to definitely try to. I'm also going to, I don't know what this little white bar is over here, uh, but I'm going to see if there is a way that we can um, turn that off because uh, for the same reason it kind of uses up real estate. Uh, and it seems, that seems like a lot of real estate on the side of the window to for just favorites and recents. Um, so, and, and it would be nice if that was a personalization that we could all do for ourselves, like somebody might like that. Um, but I would turn it off for, for me if I could. Um, but we're going to, we are definitely going to test that though, Kathy, to try to figure that out. I think, oh wait, that was almost everything I had. Um, this is the end user testing site. Um, I'm only going to pull up one of these spreadsheets because I don't want to make everyone look through these. But um, again, if you'll notice there at the bottom, um, these are just lists of things that need to be test, uh, that need to be tested. Um, you can use, uh, oh, I'm not, I don't have it. I'm not where I can make updates. You can use pass, fail, um, blocker, not applicable. Um, and we'll track these down at the bottom. Each of these rows has someone assigned. So Steven uh, gets to do all of the advising testing for us on this tab. Um, this next tab is the academic advising pages. So this is a listing of all of the pages um, that academic advising currently uses. And we're just asking um, that uh, Kristen and Phil, I thought I had updated that, uh, that Kristen um, just go through, touch the pages, make sure that they open, make sure they display data, and that's enough to pass on, on these on the pages tab. Um, and then admissions is the same way. These are the processes that the admissions folks use. Uh, Kimberly and Scott and Robin will be testing these for us um, on the admissions pages. David is just going to go through, touch these pages, make sure that they work, push the buttons, make sure that you can navigate on and off them. Um, uh, we do have some slate test testing, um, but the spreadsheets are, I hope that they are pretty clear as to who does what um, and what each of the individual fields um, is asking for. Um, I'm not going to run through all of these, but I will ask, are there um, any questions about the spreadsheets or anything that's not clear or could be clearer perhaps? Hey, Tom, it's Sarah. Yes, ma'am. What is the block on the spreadsheet for? I don't know that I've ever used that. Um, 
I'm going to edit this one. Uh, so block means red. Block means excitement. Um, it It is really no different than fail, except that it is um, a, a, a much higher critic much higher criticality. Um, so in thinking about uh, things that um, as we're testing, it would be possible for some things to fail and for us still still to move forward um, in, in, with a plan that, you know, all right, we've identified this problem. It is not critical enough for us to stop everything um, uh, and, and not move forward. Um, a blocker is something that is so critical that it has to be looked at immediately. Uh, so in your case, if like if we could not generate bills, that would be a blocker. Um, uh, or for financial aid, if, if the award entry page stopped working, um, you know, and we could not award aid, um, or if students couldn't enroll in classes, you know, those sorts of things that are uh, front and center to our business processes and highly critical, uh, if they fail, um, they fail, fail in a very exciting way and uh, they get a blocker. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And anybody else in the SIS office, is, is that is that an adequate explanation of blocker versus fail? I'm going to go I think so. I mean, I think it's just another word for critical in this yeah. case. It's something you hope really doesn't happen. Yes. <laughs> but you don't want to have to use it. <laughs> It might be something we would re reconsider if we could go live if we couldn't get it fixed, mm. potentially. Yeah. Uh, anything else? All right, I'm gonna quit sharing. I was way too optimistic about how how fast I was gonna be able to talk. Um, don't worry, Tom. None of us thought you'd make 30 minutes. I, Andrew, brought, Andrew, who's not here, was like, do you really think you're going to be able to do that? And I was like, I'm going to talk fast. I'm, yeah, I'm going to totally do that. Um, so, um, okay. A lot, a lot of good information, though. Thanks, Tom. All right. I think that is it. Um, if we don't have any additional questions, um, I did also want to say we really appreciate everybody testing. Um, it is, uh, you know, it's not something that the CIS office would be able to do or handle on our own. Um, so we really appreciate all of you that are helping us test. Um, and uh, hopefully this will all go, all go smoothly. Um, so um, we will be talking to you over the course of the next couple of weeks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.